Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Newly Forged. It is so great to be back. Big thank you to int underscore mastermind who followed us last week while we were taking the week off. But we are very appreciative of it anyway. Uh, so, hello, Internet. It's good to see you all this week. Uh, we are still missing a defect and a Sarah uh, playing Olive. So we will have our wonderful trio here. Let's go around, introduce yourselves, your character, and tell us what your character would most like to do on their last day of vacation. Like if they were on a vacation and it's their last day, anywhere in whatever world, what's the one thing they have to get in on the bucket list? And let's start down in this corner with Amber. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Amber. I play Greg, the goblin artificer. And um, I think on the last day of vacation, I mean, like, what is a vacation, really? Because isn't like, is that like when you don't do anything? Because that might get boring. So maybe I would just do some stuff. <laughs> fair, fair. I mean, like, isn't life a vacation? What am I, what am I doing right now? What are any of us doing right now? What are we doing right now? Let's get existential, folks. Well, we're going to play some D&D &D here in a minute is what we're going to do. Oh, good. I can't, uh, I can't attest to much beyond that. But uh, that's the plan for right now. Uh, moving right along into the opposing corner, we have Tanner. Hi, I'm Tanner. I play Adis the Human Ranger. I will be getting a camera by next week. Woo! It was supposed to arrive in the mail, but it did not. Uh, and last day of vacation, I believe Adis would like some goddamn peace and quiet. <laughs> Fair. Before having to go back to being the party therapist. <laughs> or therapist for like thousands year old fey beings right hey everybody's got to have a hobby mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> is it a hobby Could i don't be. know at this point i mean yeah, he's like he didn't want to do it also you've done it once so <laughs> yeah but now yeah um but uh that's wonderful i love that moving right on up next to uh matt with a fancy new hairdo it's not fancy. It's just wet. wet. <laughs> <laughs> it does do a nice little curl there. Yeah, it will slowly change over the course of the session. It'll be really interesting. Ooh, but hi, I'm uh, Clark Kent, and I'll be playing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm Matt. I'm playing Spoot, the, oh, I almost forgot what he was, Tortle, Cleric. I don't know where my mind went. Um, last day of vacation for Spoot. Uh, I don't really know, honestly. Probably about the same. I feel like he'd be pretty even killed and just pace himself throughout all the vacation. <laughs> Wonderful. I feel like Spook would it. also want some peace and quiet. Yeah, I was going to say that, but when you took it, I was like, ah, I'm not going to copy Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yes, I think he would too. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Two people can do the same thing in different places. It's okay. You're on. Um, you're in the swamp. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Greg is just gonna like run around messing with some stuff. It's perfect. Smooch just like Greg getting up. compliments on the new webcam. Way to go! Yay! Gotta love it. Um, and so with that wonderful round of intros, let's dive right in to this week's episode of Newly Forged, where last time. Grig and the Misfits returned to Fey Harbor and received their rewards from Baroness Alua Greenneedle for their successful neutralization of the strange off-season winter that was threatening Shormall. Defect decided to wander off on his own for a while, searching for the mysterious Amber he had met previously, but to no avail. Meanwhile, Adis learned that Kaelin had been injured in an explosion but in doing so had saved the lives of all of his contingent, which, upon his recovery, earned him a visit from the captain of the city guard, Targal Quartermain himself. Greg began experimenting with some new magics, and Spoot attempted to do some research into the Fae. 
The entire group was ultimately reunited with Relgen Hertag, the former Fey Warden, who is now a man made entirely of glass, and Rendy Carvival, the telepathic scorpion who claims to really be a half-elf, as they came to the Library of Three via a caravan from Red Sand. And that is where we will pick up. Uh, Adis, you have just emerged from a kind of dressing closet in your new fancy blue dragon hide armor. Finally. Yeah. I'm waiting for this armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you spend a little time with it, you'll get to figure out what exactly it do. Which will be fun and exciting. Um, also, uh, so in the room right now, you are in Seda Malor's office. You have Seda, you have Relgan, you have Rendy, you have, uh, Spoot, Grig, Adis, uh, Defect, and Kaelin as well. Uh, you see that Kaelin has, uh, after looking approvingly towards Adis and kind of nodding, like, and, uh, talking to him about the craftsmanship in the armor, has made his way over to Relgan, and you can see him kind of tapping on Relgan's uh, shoulder. And then you see Relgan kind of... Uh, you see Kaelin kind of moving for a hug and hug Relgan. Does Relgan look happy? Yeah, I cast message. Hey, he didn't ask if you wanted to hug. Uh, is that okay? By the way, that's Kaelin. I'm aware of who it is. He told me. He's knows the same tactile code. Oh. Um, but he does look uh, pleased. It's hard to read in a, a kind of face made of glass because it doesn't move very much, but you do get the sense that he is glad to know that another friend of his <clears throat> is also alive. Okay. And that's when you hear Kaylin go, who the hell is that? As a voice has just spoken in his head. That's the, you're a scorpion. Oh, uh, and he begins having a conversation, a weird conversation between Relgan and Rendy and trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, so that's what's going on in one corner of this office. Uh, Seda comes over to the rest of you. I think it's well enough to let them get reacquainted. They obviously know one another. Kind of. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to pry, but uh, I assume that Kaelin know also knows uh, Relgan from the same place that you do? Yeah, we just woke up at different times, different places, clearly affected differently. Unstable magics and all. Indeed. Well, <clears throat> it is nice to, uh, it is nice to have friends reunited. It's rare, and it seems like they're going to be talking for quite some time. Um, in the meantime, yeah, is there anything else you require? I'm just curious, have you seen anything like what's happened to Relgan before? <sighs> or heard of anything? Well, yes and no. I have heard of creatures or individuals being changed by certain magics in very strange ways. Um, I'm sure once I get to know Relgan a little bit better and the circumstances surrounding his transformation, I might be able to piece more and more information together. But and then the, the scorpion he has is apparently a half-elf from Ningwa? Yes, he did manage to tell me that just before you arrived. Oh, okay. It is very unsettling being spoken to by a scorpion in your brain, but I tell suppose... Me about it. <laughs> yes, well, but I suppose he means well enough and uh, have no reason not to take him at his word at this moment. So 
We'll continue on doing what we can for them. And perhaps we'll be able to learn more. <coughs> I do not know much of Ningwa. I just know it is far off on the other side of the uh, Volantic Ocean. And, sorry, uh, the Vantic Ocean. And uh, it is fairly isolationist still. This book, and I'll give him like the Tales of Ningwa. I don't know if it's of any help. It's some folklore. Hmm. But it's all I've had to go on. I haven't been able to think of anything. Ah, well, I will certainly uh, look into some of these folk tales. They often contain elements of truth and fact in there somewhere. We'll see if it can be of any use in helping in whatever has happened to your scorpion friend. Adis pulls the book out of Swoot's inventory. Oh, do you? I, I still have it in my inventory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember who had it last then. No, I was going to bring it up too, though, so that really doesn't matter at this point. Okay. <laughs> Fair, fair. Uh, well, um, I'm going to need my office for a little while. Uh, you're more than welcome to take one of the study rooms, or uh, if you want. Um, what are, I'm sure you want to get reacquainted with your friends. So uh, It's been a minute. Yes, uh, I believe study 14 is available. Uh all right. Thank you. Thank you. And as always, it's a pleasure seeing you all. You as well. So you gather up your little troop and you head into study 14 and you spend as much time as you want figuring stuff out, talking about what your plans are with Relgan and Rendy, uh, which, what are they? What do you want to do with them? Are you going to try to foist them off on the library? Are you going to hold them up somewhere? What's <laughs> your plan? I mean, it depends what they want because... Rogan doesn't really sleep, and Rendy just sits on his shoulder. So I don't think we need, like, a whole apartment and room for them and stuff like that. Mm hmm Um. I mean, they're pretty weird. So I don't know what, like, we get weird looks, so won't he get weird looks? Pointing I feel like Rogan. maybe at least right now the library might be safer. Um... We can try to figure something out later. If we keep a room at the inn throughout our next trip, they could just stay in there. Like Spook could give up his room, for instance, and then he could find somewhere else to sleep if he needs to. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, you know, don't know how the city will react to a man of glass. Yeah, exactly. Concern. Precisely. Um, I mean, Randy, do you have an opinion? Or Kaylin have a suggestion? Um, they they are fine to do whatever you guys think is the best. Uh, Kaylin, you know, says pretty much says, like, they're welcome at the apartment, but it's not that big. I mean, it's big enough for you and me, but that's kind of it. Right. And, like, I mean can't rent Ralkan doesn't like eat or sleep <laughs> he just chills so where do where does Seda live where do the monks live do they live in the library or do they go home uh you don't know you have never asked I mean, if they live in the library, then maybe there's, like, a closet or a bed that they can, like, hang out in and have some space. And if they don't, then maybe we just, like, put him in a big cloak and we take him to the inn, and he just wears a big cloak every time he goes out. <laughs> uh, he is currently wearing, like, a hooded desert garb kind of deal, so. I was about to say, I'm this whole time I'm imagining, like, is he naked? <laughs> and some gloves. I mean, like, I bet his clothes are frozen in glass, too. Yeah. Yeah, you do know that his armor and accoutrement, his, all his weapons, everything that he had on him whenever this happened to him is all glass. Um, 
see that. I mean, if he if it's possible if like there's rooms here that he can stay in for now until we figure something out more permanent. I mean, maybe. I yeah, you I mean, you ask Seda, and uh, they do have uh, some cells for some of the lower monks, um, and there's a couple that are available that they could stay in if that's what you would like. Yeah, I mean, it's, just it's, until... it's especially easy since uh, Relgan doesn't eat, so there's no like feeding him, and Rendy's a scorpion, so he'll just get whatever but... bugs he can. Yeah. So, I mean, we can do this for now and then figure out a more permanent situation when the situation comes around. Great. So, yeah, you make all these arrangements. Uh, Kaylin, uh, still on inactive duty, is going to spend some time talking with Relgan and Rendy, apparently. Um, Tell me. Sorry? How is the mighty bees? I didn't catch that. How is the mighty bees? Oh, the mighty bees. Sorry. Um, uh, are, who are you asking? Are you asking Rendy or... I will cast message and ask Relgan. I am not speaking to Rendy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get a response. Oh, the kobold. Um, I believe he's leading the kobolds in the mines now and they're uh being good workers and it's helping the town out a lot i haven't really hung out with any of them i've been mostly in polyphor's shop hmm. okay i guess it's good that they're doing good yeah probably that's all our kobold baby is that's all i want for him <laughs> being the leader of uh, this new kobold mining empire mm -hmm. <laughs> great uh, so they go they're shown off to the cell um, it's, uh, cell is like a loose term it's not like actual a, a prison cell um, I mean yeah I know like uh, monastery yeah they're just like small bedrooms like one person exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, cool New York, we call those studios. <laughs> the truth hurts. I hate it. <laughs> um, great. So uh, that leaves the rest of you to kind of do whatever it is you want uh, for the time being. Uh, do you have any projects you're aiming to get itched on? You're itching to get working on, or do you just want to kind of fast forward a little bit? And fast forwarding. I'm yeah, I'm okay fast forwarding, I think. I I forget. Cool. If we have any projects aside from like talking. Yeah, I think it would just at this point it would be things for a personal game. Practicing yeah. a language or Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Making another health potion, which is uh, I don't think we actually used many on the last adventure, so I think I'm the only one that used a health potion. Everyone else should have one still. I think so. Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't hurt if I bought a couple more then for me. So do you want to attempt mm -hmm. to go buy some healing potions? Right, because um, it would be like a full day if I wanted to make my own, right? Yeah. Essentially. Okay. Are mm -hmm. you going to go back to Haggy's Healies? Yeah, I still have uh, a couple. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you sure. make your way yeah. there, and she is there in all of her kind of crazy old lady hair sticking up uh, glory. Oh, oh, hello, sweetie. It's good to see you again. Oh, so strapping you are. And what can I, what can old Haggy do for you today? Well, I think it's time that I get a couple more health potions from you. I'm sad to say Ooh. we've used the ones last time. Well, that's what they're for, dear. That's what they're for. Glad they're keeping such a strapping young turtle, tortle like yourself uh, up and at them, as it were, huh? They're Haggy's best, you know. Well, they've they've worked very reliably so far, I can say. Well, I'm so glad to hear it. I've had a bit of a run recently, but I do have three available still. Uh, Okay. 
yeah, I will take those three then. Thank you. All right. For you, sweetheart, you can have all three for 150. Oh, Grinch2369 has followed us. Thank you, Grinch, for joining us here on Newly. So nice to meet you. Um, so, yeah, uh, 150 gold and they're yours. Uh, great. I love that that is, well, never mind. She's not trying to make much money off of me, it sounds like. Which is good. I will pay her the 150 gold. Uh, she takes it. Oh, thanks, sweetie. Oh, it's, I do hope you come back. You're, you're Spoot, right? That's right. Oh, I love it. It's such a great, unique name. And, uh, as she's like, does this transaction and she's kind of walking you out as a, as it completes. Oh, well, thanks so much. And she kind of squeezes your big turtle arm, like, and kind of, a and kind of goes, Ooh, all the muscles you got. <laughs> Have a good day! And then she, like, slams the door as you uh, exit. Is that inside check? Sure, you can make an inside check. <laughs> it's a thing for turtles. Yeah. Ives Got It has resubscribed at Tier 1 for six months. Meow, meow, meow. Wow. That's my cat. Wow. <laughs> Ives Got It. Well done. Uh, I've got it. You should have access to a special badge that you, if you want to use it in chat, uh, as a six month subscriber, you should have a new sub badge. What? Badges, badges, badger, badger, so. badger, badges, badges, badges. Um, and thank you to Grinch for coming in from the start playing discord server, uh, who apparently loves supporting fellow DMs. So we all really appreciate awesome. that, Grinch. Thanks for coming. Hope you hope you have fun here on our little plane of existence. Woot. Uh, so what did you roll for your insight check, Spoot? Oh, a lowly 13. Uh, <laughs> you get the sense that Haggy likes just men, big kind of hunky men, and being a large, robust turtle, you qualify. Excellent. Okay. Well, I think Spoot Blush is just a slight bit and then goes <laughs> on his way. All right. Uh, fantastic. So you all are kind of going about your business and meet back up again. Uh, when uh, Adis, a message comes for you, not like in your mind, but an actual like rolled up message. Uh, delivered to you by one of the messenger services that like uh, it's like a teenage boy who like runs up to you and says, are you Adis Varger? Yeah. Oh, good. I've been looking everywhere for you. They said you were wearing different color clothes, but then someone said you were wearing new new. Um, anyway, uh, this is for you from the Temple of Melora. Thank you. Uh, and the kid kind of stands there for a second and kind of <coughs> Oh, um Hey, I only have gold, so I'll give him a gold. I don't have any chance. His eyes go fucking wide. Oh, uh, thank you. If you ever, if you ever need a message run, you just look for me. You just ask for ask for Jimmy. Jimmy will do it. Of course. Thank you. Ah, great. And he kind of like scampers off and kind of shouts bye, and uh, runs off onto his next mission, kind of wide eyed. Uh, I mean, he did, but like. As soon as he did, he realized it was real and was like, "Whoa!" Uh, you just gave him like three months worth of salary in like one go, so he's oh, all Jesus. about it. <laughs> I, I, quick question, because my D and D Beyond is different than my Roll Twenty. Uh -huh. What's our proficiency bonus at level eight? Is it plus four? Uh, three, no, three, plus three, three, three and nine. nine. Yeah. Nah, okay. Because my Roll Twenty is saying four, and I don't know why. Oh, that's weird. Let's it's go with let's go with three. roll twenty. It's definitely three. <laughs> yeah. All right. Figure out how to fix this. Oh, apparently Grinch's players uh, rescued a hunky turtle, and so Spoot, you might be in another universe. Ooh. Um, we are playing around with portals in this, so we are. But indeed, uh, Adis, you open up this message, and it is very short. It just simply says, uh, Adis, I found something that may be of use. Come quick. 
and it's signed Wave Watcher Tal. Who you remember from your visit to the Temple of Melora as being the young, surprisingly young, head priest of Melora at the temple outside of the city. Right. Uh, do you guys want to come to the Temple of Melora? To Melora. Uh, it's my goddess. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. All right, so you all head on that way. Um, whew, away you go. Well, I'm assuming oh, Spook wants to go. Uh, yes, uh, I will go. I have no qualms about entering a mother. Oh, God, hold on. OBS just crashed. Oh, no. This oh. camera's great. We can get all of Amber's uh, Grig expressions and, oh, and Chris maybe not. detail. Yeah, I know, right? Are we still good? Are we still alive? I You're still here. Frozen. Oh, great. We killed the dragon. All while right. You were gone. You're still frozen, but maybe just on my screen. We also no, changed our internet, and I am no longer hardwired. Ooh. Yeah, you have to get a switcher for me to do that. Ah, gotcha. Um, well, I think we are still good uh, on Twitch, and you can all still hear me, so... Yeah. Great. Cool. Um, let me just check something here. Oh, yep. We're still live. Thank you, Ives Got It, for for checking in and letting us know. You're the best. Um, great. Okay. Yes, we're good. Sorry. My computer like notified me that everything had crashed, but apparently we're still good. All right. Let's do this. <laughs>